Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty interesting Ryzen powered mini PC known as the Asus PN50. Now keep in mind, most of the time when you find these online, they will be bare bones, so you have to add your own RAM and storage. But the model I have here is actually powered by the 4500U. That's a 6-core Ryzen 5 APU with a base clock of 2.3 and a boost up to 4 GHz along with built-in Radeon 6 graphics. So we are working with a mobile Ryzen chip here, but as you can see, they have taken the form factor of this and just slammed it way down. This thing is super tiny. It's actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be looking at pictures online of this thing. And along with the unit itself, you're also going to get your VESA mount. you get some hardware for mounting your M.2 NVMe SSD and a 65-watt power supply. And since this is a bare bones kit, I do have to add my own RAM and storage. I'm going to go with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. That's the maximum this little unit supports. So we will get pretty decent performance out of that APU with this faster RAM. And a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD from Silicon Power. Now keep in mind, the PN50 also supports a 2.5 inch drive, be it an SSD or a mechanical drive, and it'll fit right in the bottom. So you can have up to 4 terabytes of storage in this unit, a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD, and a 2 terabyte 2.5 inch drive. So throwing all the extra components in here is super easy. There's four screws on the bottom, and the whole bottom will slide right out. We have our SODIMM slots here, so we will be running in dual channel, a single M.2 slot, and like I mentioned, we can throw a 2.5 inch drive in here. This actually mounts in the bottom of the case and everything slides on. So yeah, I think ASUS has done a great job with expandability of this mini PC, given the form factor. I'm going to go ahead and throw the RAM in here. Keep in mind, you can add up the 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, but I opted for 16. We're going to be running in dual channel mode. There's no way to overclock this. So I'll go ahead and install both of these DIMMs here. And this SSD is going to slide right in here in that open M.2 slot. Now this does come pre-installed with a Wi-Fi 6 Intel card, and speeds are super fast over Ethernet and Wi-Fi here. So now that I have the RAM and the NVMe SSD installed, I just need to slide this bottom right back on. There's four screws to hold it on, and I'm actually about done here with the setup. I just need to install Windows 10. But before we move over to Windows, I just want to give you a quick look at all of the I.O. on this unit. On the front here, we have our 3.5mm audio jack, USB Type-C, a micro SD card reader, one USB 3.2 Gen 1 connector on the front. We also have an IR receiver and our power button. On both sides, there's not much going on. We do have some ventilation for that CPU. But when we take a look at the back here, we have a full-size HDMI port, full-size DisplayPort 1.4, another USB Type-C connector, Gigabit Ethernet, two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 connectors, and our power input. Now this little PC will actually support up to four displays at 4K. We have two over USB Type-C, one over HDMI, and one over DisplayPort. So you can run four displays at 4K on this unit at the same exact time. And just to give you an idea of the size here, we have a Raspberry Pi 4 and an Xbox controller sitting right next to this PC. I mean, it's not much bigger than an Xbox controller. So with my unit built, here's the specs. For the CPU, we have that Ryzen 5 4500U, 6 cores, base clock of 2.3, boost up to 4 GHz. The GPU is the Radeon 6 at 1500 MHz. We have 16 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz. A 512 GB NVMe SSD. We have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and we're going to be running Windows 10 Pro on this unit. I've actually already installed it, so let's go ahead and move over there now. Alright, so here it is. I have Windows 10 Pro installed on this Asus PN50. We have the Ryzen 5 4500U, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, and the built-in Radeon 6 graphics. So one thing I wanted to make sure of was these graphics were hitting the correct clock, so I just always test it here just to make sure. Here's the clock sent at 400 megahertz. This should jump up to 1500. Just want to make sure that we're going to get the maximum out of this. And through all of my tests, this has maxed out at 1500 megahertz, no issues whatsoever. So uh, with a lot of these lower end or smaller PCs, I notice they limit a lot. But this one here definitely has the CPU and GPU running at full speed when it needs to. So I've been really impressed with this little box here. I test a lot of mini PCs. I've tested more powerful mini PCs that were just a bit bigger than this. But I'm really liking this one. Now I am a big fan of these Ryzen APUs. And I really do wish that I could have picked up the 4800U version of this. But at close to $900, I couldn't fork out the cash for something like that. So I opted for the mid-range, which has that 4500U. And I gotta say, this thing performs excellent for the form factor. 
Now going into this, if you needed to pick something like this up for your main desktop, you could definitely use it. Let's uh, test out a little bit of web browsing. I'm using the Edge browser and we'll just head over to the ASUS website. This thing is quick. We got six cores there with that 4500U and a boost up to four gigahertz. Uh, we'll just check something else here. Everything loads up quickly. I mean, for web browsing, you'll have no issues with this. 4K video playback. Let's check out some YouTube here. Just gonna pause it real quick. Stats for nerds. Make sure we are at 4K, go full screen with it. We dropped two frames so far. Definitely would never notice that. And as we play through, or if we were already buffered a little bit, we wouldn't drop any with 4K or 5K video playback on this little device. So if you did want to pick something like this up for media consumption, be it streaming, or even setting this up as a little Plex server, it's going to work out just fine. I mean, this definitely has enough power, and I wouldn't be opposed to streaming, I'd say, three to four 4K streams on this using it as a little Plex server. Moving over to some benchmarks, first up we have Crystal Disk, and keep in mind I'm using that cheaper Silicon Power NVMe, so your speeds will differ depending on the SSD you use, but for this one here, at a 512GB NVMe, it's looking pretty decent. Next up we have Cinebench R20, total score 1173, not bad for the form factor, but it's really not that impressive. Remember, we don't have any extra threads with the 4500U, we just have 6 cores here. Geekbench 5 actually looked really great, single core 1118, multi 4165. When it comes to just basic workflow, here's PC Mark 10, total score of 4078, and if we take a look at the bottom here, it's stating that we're better than 35% of all other machines tested here, so I think this is doing a pretty good job. Next up, 3D Mark Night Raid, total score 9793, and finally, Fire Strike with 2,709. And now we're gonna move over to some PC gaming. Now, when it comes to these mini PCs, we all know that most of the time we can build something with much better performance for PC gaming for cheaper using used parts from Amazon and eBay. But personally, I'm a big fan of these small form factor machines and it's actually amazing what these things can do in 2021. So first up, we have CSGO. I did take this down to 720p, but we have a low and medium mix. I got an average of 71 FPS. This definitely favors Intel over AMD, but it's looking pretty decent. Next up, we have World of Warcraft, low, medium settings, 1080p. You're gonna be able to play this at 60 all day long. I just keep it locked at 60 to keep that GPU usage down. And if we take a look at the top left-hand corner, there's a chance I could have went up a little more because we're only utilizing 38% of that GPU with WoW here on low medium settings at 1080p. Here we have Fortnite 1080p using their new performance mode and this actually averaged 68 FPS. I'd say this is fully playable, but with performance mode, keep in mind we're basically at low. I do have resolution scale set to 100% though. Doom Eternal, 720p, low. I still think it looks absolutely amazing on low settings. They've done a great job with this game. We're using the Vulcan back in, and this little machine managed an average of 58 FPS. Not quite 60, and when it's unlocked here, you'll see it jump up to 80 every once in a while. But on average, this did 58. Halo 3 from the Master Chief Collection, 720p, low settings, and if I did jump this up to medium settings, we wouldn't even hit 60, but it averaged 65 FPS sitting like this. Street Fighter V, 720p, low, it'll run at 60 all day, I did try to take it up a little bit, I really wish we could have got at least medium out of this, or even low 1080p, but at 100% resolution scale, I mean 720p is going to be the best we can get out of this 4500U in Street Fighter V. Here's Fallout 4, 720p, with a low medium mix, 
We are stuck at 60. You'll see it dip down to 58 every once in a while, but overall, I mean, this game is fully playable at 60 FPS, 720p, low medium. Rocket League, 1080p, performance settings, it averaged 95 FPS by the time I was done with this, and I figured that this game would run at 1080p on this machine. So this is a weird one here. We have Fall Guys, and initially going into this game with basically any low-end PC, I figured it would run at 60 1080p on basically any machine, but unfortunately that's just not the case. I did have to take this down to low settings, 720p, to get it to run at 60 on this machine. Now if you wanted to lock this at medium settings, 30 FPS, 1080p, but I wanted to see what we had to do to get this at 60. And finally, we have GTA 5. 720p, normal settings, I got an average of 68 FPS. I'd say this is really playable here, but then again, we're only at 720p. Now, just like Fall Guys, if you wanted to lock this at 30, we could do 1080p, normal high mix, but in order to get this at 60, you will have to drop it down to the 720p range. So with all of these mini PCs, I always like to test power consumption. I'm using a kilowatt meter from the wall. At idle, we average 7.8 watts. 4K video playback, 14.3. Gaming, on average, it was 35.2, and the maximum I could pull out of this from the wall was 48.4 watts. And that's a very extreme test by maxing out the GPU and CPU at the exact same time, so you'll be hard-pressed to ever see that kind of wattage from this unit. As CPU temps go, this did way better than I thought it would. At idle, we're around 46. 4K video playback does jump up to about 53. Gaming on average, 69. And the maximum CPU temps I saw out of this was 84 degrees Celsius. And that was running Cinebench R23 for that 10 minute test that they have now. So yeah, I mean, with this low wattage CPU and the cooling system they have in the PN50, it does a great job. And fan noise, in my opinion, isn't a big deal at all. Even when gaming with a game like GTA 5, it's really hard to hear it. This is not jumped up like a little jet plane whatsoever, and if you did have this, let's say, mounted behind your monitor, you'd be really hard pressed to hear this, even with the CPU maxed out at 100%. So I so think they did a great job there also. So it would have definitely been nice to test out that 4800U, but like I mentioned, I mean, the price on that was close to $900, and I personally didn't want to spend that. I picked this up for $476 for the base unit without the RAM and the storage. So when it's all said and done, I have close to $580 into this mini PC, and that's definitely expensive, especially given the fact that you can take an old HP or an Optiplex and add a 1650 to it and just blow this thing out of the water. But you're not going to get this kind of form factor, and I think that's the main selling point to something like this. It definitely would have been nice if this had a more powerful CPU at the same price, but I think for what the 4500U is, this is an excellent performing mini PC, and the build quality from ASUS on these PN50s is definitely top notch. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I was super excited to get my hands on this. I will be doing an emulation test, so keep an eye out on the channel. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the PN50, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.